iOS, it's only sport. Martin Devlin, Lachlan Moore. Yes, we are on France. We're at the Rugby World Cup. Now, every week on our show, on a Monday afternoon around about 3.15, 3.20, dear old mate joins us from Twizel. The feature is called LBP, Let's Be Positive, from TMG. That's Twizel's Matt Gunn. Here in Paris, mate, after that win against Ireland, we couldn't be more positive. Even you must have loved it. Oh, I did love it, Martin. I tell you what, rugby's back as a as a spectacle, and if you haven't enjoyed what's been on offer from quarterfinals on, you're pretty hard to please. That All Blacks game, uh, I don't know anyone whose heart wasn't racing, who wasn't on the edge of their seats. Um, absolutely fantastic, and the time is perfect here. It would be better in the evening, but I don't mind 8 a.m. Actually, yeah, guess, yeah, talk to me about that because obviously, you know, before we left, those games were on then. Uh, this is, you know, a completely different headspace. And now that you've raised it, I haven't even considered it. But we're going to these games, watching these games at 9 p.m. Now, that's the latest start I can remember for an All Blacks game. Maybe at, a, at, a, at another World Cup, there would have been one around that time. But it is an unusual time. Matt, by the time the game finishes, it's 11. You get out of the stadium, it's midnight. You're home at 1 o'clock. So, so it is quite an evening but yeah you're getting up at home and having breakfast uh and these these matches are absolutely monumental look all four quarterfinals i thought were, were were hell of a good games obviously the two that stood out were here in paris us against ireland and the box against against france Two of the best games, I think, that have been uh, on offer for a very long time. I'll tell you what I loved about the All Blacks is that that last six or seven minutes, I don't know technically how long they defended for, but phase after phase after phase, not a penalty, uh, no no ill discipline. They played the game they needed. Ireland just kept coming and coming. And I've got to be honest, I'm probably with thousands of others who thought they are going to score at some point. And yet all of a sudden, the turnover happens, the whistle blows and the game is over. And I don't think, honestly, in the last three or four years, all black fans would have rejoiced quite the way they have with this one. Ireland, they thought they were winning that. The fans thought they were winning it. I'm pretty sure Ireland thought they were booking themselves another ticket through to a semi-final. It could have been a final. It would have been a fitting final. But it's a great way to start the day. I've got to be honest with you, getting up at eight is nothing. You're up up anyway, you're on the go, you're ready to do things, and then just sit back and watch that and just lap it up. It it was absolutely brilliant. Look, I asked Ian Foster and Sam Kane afterwards in the press conference and said, you know, do you realise how happy you've made everyone back home and even said you've made the Labour voters happy. But look, that's what I wanted to ask you about because we can't we can't tap into that. Of course, we can talk to our mates and our family back home. We can we can read whatever's online and so forth and look at the social media. But really, tell me the mood of the country after that. There's no way that you're not skipping around all day on Saturday, are you? Oh, no, I ran into a couple of people here uh, at my distillery on Saturday, uh, about 1.30 or 2 o'clock. I had a little tour out here, and uh, the guy that had come through, he was down from Auckland on holidays, he said his heart was still racing. He got up, watched it in the hotel he was staying in. He came out here, and he was over the moon. His wife was overjoyed. He was in a good mood. They had things to do. But, look, as you talk to people around about my town, um, The passion is back, Martin, and now the expectation has gone through the roof. There's a bit of a feeling with a change of government here, and we're not exactly sure how it'll work out, when he may be involved. But the mood was lifted, and then it was lifted even further later on Saturday with a change of government. It just felt like everybody was ready for this, and uh, that's what we're going to get. And there's a change in government, but there seems to be a change in the all-black camp. I'll tell you what, I had a big smile for Ian Foster because he's questioned, he's asked... He's, you know, I just thought to myself, he's got this team to hear, and if they're playing for him, which I keep repeatedly hearing, good on them. They, he must mean more to them than he does to a lot of the fans here, and there'll be some Canterbury fans, probably in some ways disappointed, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, which, which, one, which you it? know how they are. You know how they are. Yeah, they, I just, you know, I. 
I, I, you know that I've been on Foster's side the whole time. Or if not on his side, I've just sort of felt that he's been unfairly treated. He's been mistreated. I mean, the whole handling of the Scott Robertson thing was really insulting to him. And it was just untidy the way that it was all done. But also, every single time the All Blacks have played badly... It is just heaped on that guy. That guy's been the focal point for everyone's anger, as you say, everyone's disappointment. And it's just like, this is down to Foz, this is down to Foz. Look, in the last couple of years, Matt, we've only pulled out two performances like that. One was in Joburg last year against South Africa, and then it was against Ireland. We went on that tour last year. We looked as though, again, we'd rewrited the ship. And then in the last 20 minutes against Twickenham, it all came unstuck. So I think for a lot of us, and especially being here, that was the fear against Ireland in that last 20 minutes is that the inability of this team to close out those big games, to actually play for 80 minutes, for those guys to stay on the field that long. Because, you know, most of them, 55, 60 minutes, they're off again and the bench gets cleared. But, you know, there are two guys on the bench that weren't even used, which is really unusual. So from here, the country must be confident going in against Argentina. I just hope that the mood in New Zealand isn't overconfident because I keep reminding everyone, after we won that epic test in Joburg, who was our next? opponent Matt yeah well same opponent as this weekend look the truth yeah. is I think that people the truth is people are still cautiously optimistic you know what we've seen in the last few weeks has been a couple of BT teams absolutely demolished but you cannot put Ireland in that what they'd had 17 on the trot they were the premier team in the world they were going in thinking they were going to win it. And they threw everything at the All Blacks. And in a tight game like that, to hang on the way they did, I think probably um, it may even reflect on the on the reason why there were a couple of blokes still on the bench. Did you need to bring on fresh players that late in the game when the – uh, defensive line was set. I mean, there was no panic. There was there was no feeling that Ireland looked like they were going to make a break in those last five minutes. But it just seemed inevitable with that much ball that they would score. But uh, what a finish to it. And um, look, I, I, I think everyone is just super excited for the way this goes because as much as people back them at the TAB, I really don't think the majority of people thought the All Blacks would win it, but after that performance against Ireland they have to be a chance. We call this slot LBP Let's Be Positive. This is the most positive that both of us have been. How ridiculous is this? Is this what one game does to us? And I was just thinking then while you're talking about it, I was thinking, I could talk about this game for the rest of the year, mate. I mean, if we were sitting there taking talk back, as we used to do, I could I could take calls on this forever. And if, 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 um, if people are that excited and they actually still want to relive every moment and, and, and they still feel that joy, why the hell not? Can I ask you this, mate? Do you now think that the All Blacks are still New Zealand's number one team? I know we had all the up the wars and the euphoria all about that, but are the All Blacks still bigger than everything else in New Zealand sport? You're an Aussie. Give us that. Give us your perspective. Oh, without doubt. I mean, there's no, there's no doubt that they are. I mean, everybody was on a high with the Warriors, and uh, I get that. And it could have continued, but it didn't. You know, knocked out, didn't make the final, played very well, um, recovered from a couple of very poor seasons. But there's nothing quite like the way the country revs itself up when the All Blacks are on top. And... What I've loved about the last few games is that the referees have let the game roll. Yeah, yeah, there hasn't yeah. been there hasn't hasn't been a lot of interference, and we've seen we've seen the rugby that I think the country wants to see. Not stop, start, stop, start, stop, start. Penalties left, right, here, there. I think that. Those two quarterfinals in particular were both so spectacular that um, the referees have to be patted on the back. Now, obviously, losing teams have always got something to say, but from a viewer's point of view and from someone that came here 25 years into my life, hadn't really had much of a rugby history, and then to see what it meant over here, that game against Ireland, that was one of the pinnacles. You know, I know World Cups have been won and lost, but I tell you what, um, the expectation wasn't where it was previously. Um, and so those results are always that little bit extra sweet. Devlin. That is a disgusting act. The Platform.